Hi everybody, I am Sandy Payne and welcome to the first episode of The PCS Project. On today's episode, I'm going to share my story and my journey as a military spouse and what got me here today, along with some best practices as PCS season is coming about, things to think about as you're getting your home ready to make the big move. And I'm also going to talk about the VA loan a little bit and what that means to you as a military service member and the benefits it has for you. So first, I want to talk to you about my story and kind of what brought me to this podcast and my journey as a military spouse for 23 years, um, accompanying my husband all over the world as he fulfilled his duty assignments. So back in, we'll just go back to when I got married in 1996. That's when it all started. My husband was a brand new first lieutenant stationed at Fort Drum. And of course, you know, we did the whole moving and visiting each other back and forth while we were dating. And then when I got married, hauled everything up to the beautiful cold country of Fort Drum. And it was really an exciting part of my life. As a child, I had never really traveled very far. So just moving my whole life to a new state was, you know, nerve wracking, as I'm sure a lot of you understand. But being part of that military experience and meeting so many people in my shoes. Um, my family never moved. I We actually just sold my family home that my parents had owned for 50 years uh, just a few months ago. And so I never moved um, in my life. I lived in the same house in the same place with the same neighbors and the same friends um, for my life until I got married and moved away. And so this was a really, really big step for me and PCSing you know, I had no idea what I was about to get into um, and how many times I would do it and how my life would change and how I would adjust and adapt to all of the things to make it easier. Of course, the first move was going to be a complete chaotic mess. But as moves went on for 23 years, seven different duty stations, seven of them in Germany, three different times there really kind of started to develop a pattern and just a way of doing things, not just that I created on my own, but like learning from so many people who were already in my shoes and had been doing this for so many years. And the network that military families have um, is something quite remarkable. Now that my husband's been retired for seven years, I still feel like that military connection is something that just doesn't exist outside of the military life. But anyway, going back, kind of how many times should we all move and we go to unpack at the new place and there's like dirty dishes, there's like trash in the trash can. Um, I mean, everything was just chaotic and all over the place and and mixed matching. You spend half the time, like one box would have, you know, your TV and your bedding and like some kids toys. It It was just kind of a mash and it was almost more difficult to like unpack and try to create your space, um, knowing that you weren't going to be there very long, a year, two years, maybe even like 10 months, in some cases, even shorter. And who wanted to spend, you know, a month or two months trying to get their house unpacked and create this home and this great space for their family, um, just to have to kind of like pack it up and do it all again. So year over year and move after move, I started to develop like, okay, we're going to get ready for a move. We've got orders. I don't know where we're going. Um, but there are things that I can do to get ready because honestly, like sometimes you get six months or a year notice and there's other times that I've experienced, you have like a week, like no joke, a week to actually get your, get your life together and, and movers are coming. And so trying to create and develop and just kind of build some habits into moving as a military family that were kind of always ready. Like you were always on guard at any minute just like your husband or your spouse could get any orders anytime to deploy, like you could get those same orders anytime to move. So it was always important that we were ready. In that development and lots of deployments, and at the time I had my own interior design kind of gig, and I got really, really good at creating my own home. I think my record time of unpacking was like a week. I think I had everything on the wall, everything, every box gone, everything ready to go. Like I've been living there the whole time in literally a matter of a week. And 
so many people, you know, a lot of times we'd all be moving in at the same time and everybody would say, oh my gosh, it's like you've been living here forever. Like, how do you have this down? Like every time I move, I'm like, I hardly get the boxes unpacked and I'm like ready to pack again. And I would start sharing my tips and my tricks. Well, this is how I get ready and this is how I'm sure, you know, the movers pack it and unpack it. And these are things I've experienced over my moves. And time after time, everyone would say, oh my gosh, you should write all this down. You should write a book about this. Like these tips would be so helpful, you know, for so many people that are moving and have our lifestyle. And so my husband wound up deployed again to Iraq. I think it was the third deployment that he had. And I knew it was gonna be at least a year, maybe even more. And I thought, I really need a project. You know, the kids are busy with their activities. We're over there in Germany. I'm not working. I can't work. And I was like, maybe I need to just really start thinking about this and writing this stuff down. And I thought, I don't know how to write a book. I've never written a book before, but I do know what I'm doing. And if it can help anybody else, like what better to do than, than to write all this down, put it all in a book that's available to military families. And so that's what I did. And that's kind of the development here I am 25 years later, thinking about a podcast, right? It used to be books and all this kind of stuff. Now everything's audio, everything's digital. And I'm thinking, how can I get the same information into the hands of our military families in just a different way? So I did wind up writing a book. It's called That Military House, Move It, Organize It, and Decorate It. And it really outlines our journey not just our journey of getting orders and getting the house ready and preparing and checklists and all of these great things to help you ready, but also kind of how to move as a military family. Like we don't always know where we're moving into. Like you just get quarters like, hey, surprise, here's your house. Here's the key. And you're like, oh my gosh, is my stuff going to fit? How many rooms is there? Like how all my furniture isn't going to fit in this room? Like where do I put it? And we're always struggling with juggling, like just juggling our lives all the time. And so I thought it would be important in the book too. And these are all kinds of things we're going to talk about throughout all of these different episodes, which is super exciting, is just best practices, like things I learned and things I feel like are super valuable to military families like today, like literally today. I don't think the process changes much. We used to do a lot of things in binders and paper and on discs, like the silver CDs, <laughs> as far as like storing pictures and things like that and inventory of our homes. And I don't even know if people even do that anymore. Um, now everything's digital. So I thought it would just be fun. So that's kind of my journey. That is what led me to want to develop this podcast. Um, now I'm stationed here at Fort Hood. We've been here for over 15 years. Fort Hood was our last duty station. And luckily through some deployments, if you want to call it luck, I guess, my kids got really situated. We were able to, you know, have them spend the rest of their education, both of them, you know, in one place in the same school district with the same similar friends. You know, obviously a lot were still moving. And we just thought it was a really great time, you know, in our life. And when my husband decided to retire, um, it was kind of like, well, what are we gonna do? Where are we gonna go? Like, we don't even know civilian life. We don't even know what that's like. We're so used to having like an instant family everywhere we go. And there was a moment of like, I don't know, you felt a little isolated making this transition, I guess you could say, from military lifestyle to not. And luckily, I had started a business in the Fort Hood area, just continuing my journey as an interior decorator and designer turned into this business. And I had done a lot of work um, for realtors in the area, staging and just giving design recommendation and working with contractors and getting homes ready for sale and all that fun stuff. And so kind of it became a natural development. I thought I've got the skill of moving, organizing and decorating, and I think I'm going to get my real estate license. And so he decided to retire. I decided to get my real estate license and apply all of the experiences that I had for 23 years wasn't quite 23 years at that time, but, um, and 
be there and be there to help other military families come and go as they PCS. And I'm knowing that I've done it before. Um, I know what they're going through and it has really been like the lifeblood of my business working with military families. So as a realtor, I'm like, okay, cool. So now we have all of that down. We've got the moving down. We've got the, you know, helping our buyers and sellers find homes when they come in and out. And I just thought I am not the only one. There are so many stories. There are so many people that are have and still and will continue this military lifestyle and PCS journey. And part of me just wants to share mine. Um, I've heard over my 23 years some crazy stories like people moving from overseas and like every bit of their household goods like sunk with the ship, like literally. Um, gosh, how do you recover from that? Like I get mad when like there's a chip and a wood piece of furniture or something's a glass is broken. Couldn't imagine having such a thing happen. So over these episodes, I'm going to find people that want to share their stories. Good, bad, ugly, difficult, funny. Um, so if you've experienced something or you know another military family that would love to tell their story and just come to a place where we all know we are still in this together. There's nothing anyone has done that we haven't done before. And being able to just be there for each other in a support system way and know that you're not alone. We've all experienced it, we've all done it, and we're all here for each other. So that's kind of the preface, why I started the podcast, why I feel like it's just my calling to just keep doing that, just keep being connected to military families through their PCS journey. The next thing I wanna talk about is just a few tips I know that PCS season is coming, orders is, are going to be created soon, we're starting to get um, people calling our team and saying, hey, we're not coming yet, but we're waiting for orders. I think we're coming to Fort Hood. You know, want to start looking for a house um, and really start thinking about those steps, those preparatory steps to take to get your house ready. So a few of my favorite tips I'll share First is I always feel like, yes, the military is going to come and pack you, but there has to be some type of organization. Like that would be number one. And we all are limited to the amount of household baggage that we bring, you know, different ranks and different number of dependents. You're allowed a certain amount of weight that's covered by the military um, for your move. And anything over you have to pay for per pound, I think. So we're always in this like mega purge mode, right? So your lives change, your kids change. We don't have the opportunity to just keep storing everything in the garage or the attic. Like I was saying before, my parents moved from being in a home for 50 years. Right now is the longest time we've ever lived in a home, but it's because we're retired and this is our you know forever, so to speak, home. But when my parents moved, oh my gosh, they were sending me pictures of like my ballet costumes from when I was five that they had kept, like that were dry rotted, the elastic was gone, it was faded. Um, I mean, just boxes and boxes of boxes of all this childhood stuff. And we don't have the luxury of doing that as a military family. You know, we've got to move from one place to the next and we kind of can't accumulate too much unless we get rid of it. So there's this massive like, do I keep it? Do I get rid of it? Do I throw it away? So the first tip that's in my book that I love, I call it my three box method of, or of organizing. It's super simple, but a great reminder. Basically, you have three boxes and the first box you're going to label or bin or whatever, pile, <laughs> wherever you want to designate is going to be your um keep box so these are things that are relevant to you still today your family still uses clothing that's the right size bedding that still fits your beds like all those relevant pieces that you know you're going to need for the next location the next box that you have is your sell or donate so these are things like i don't know my style changes like design wise and even like clothing wise every few years i get tired of something and i want to get something new so these would be things that would still be really good for someone else you know, people are having kids, so maybe kids' clothes that are still in great shape, your clothes that don't fit one way or the other anymore, home decor items that are still in great shape, um, and maybe it's just not your thing. So you can decide to donate those to a local um, donation place, or there's all kinds of places online that you can look to sell things. 
So that's kind of that second pile, that second box. The third one is going to be your trash box. So not all, it's just crazy how much stuff we accumulate that like it does, it's not even relevant to our lives or really anyone's lives anymore. So clothing that's stained, uh, ripped, you know, you're just not gonna be able to fix it anymore. Um, you know, all the old shoes, old bags, just things that are peeling. You know, I have a ton of handbags, but for some reason that handle, that strap is never made out of the same material as the bag and it always winds up breaking down and, you know, getting gross before the rest of it. So just all of that stuff that no one is going to want. You'd be surprised how much is in there. So you're basically purging your life by a third, I guess you could almost call it. And it's such a refreshing thing, but it's crazy how much you actually accumulate every time you move because maybe you're moving to another country or another part of America and you've gathered, you know, fun, you know, travel items or just different things for your house. And, you know, we accumulate these things as we move and as our lives change and as we want to build new memories um, and have things that we kind of hang on to. And it's crazy how much it actually accumulates and so that is always like my first step and it's kind of an ongoing step i i really got into the mindset of okay if i bring something in something's got to go out like there is no way i'm going to bring in new new throw pillows that were cute stylish for my couch and i'd have to do something with the other ones and immediately it, it kind of had to go into that mental process of am i going to donate them sell them or am i going to just throw them out and so you become this kind of habit where you're always, you know, purging and replacing and making these mental decisions all the time. So that is a habit that I think was one of my best habits that I got into right away. Uh, we never had to pay for like storage units um, or anything like that. Still to this day, we do not have anything stored outside of our home, uh, which I truly attest to the fact that I was able to do that so well and kind of get into that habit early. The next thing I would recommend in your preparation for your PCS season that's going to be coming soon is getting all of your like things together. Like don't have three linen closets and like this, you know, the kids sheets are in their closet and your sheets are in your closet and towels are over here and like designate a space for like everybody's linens, like all in one spot. And here's the cool thing. I always found when the movers were coming, I would like hide all my sheets and pillows because for some reason they would be obsessed with using them as packing material. So they would take out blankets, like wrap your TVs and like wrap all this stuff in your linens. What a laundry nightmare. There's no way that I am gonna let my bed sheets wrap my TV, get to the other side a, a month or weeks or who knows how long later after sitting in all of that box and paper and dust and like not have to wash everything. It was like literally a wash laundry night, nightmare. Same with your clothes. So a few of the things I did was I always tied everything up. So I would put all my sheet sets together, you know, the top sheet, the bottom sheet, the pillowcases, put it all inside one pillowcase, fold it over and like tie it. That way, if they took that, you know, they weren't gonna disassemble a sheet set and untie things, but it kind of guaranteed that maybe I just had to wash that one pillowcase rather than everything inside. So same with your towels, get them together, bundle them, I guess is what you would call it. You have string or tape or ribbon or whatever you have, or even if you have to put them in like separate trash bags tied up so that if they did pick it up and use it as, you know, packing material, it would at least be all together and stay somewhat clean. Same, silverware, dishes, keep everything organized in its own place. Uh, even your children's toys, you know, have designated tubs you know, those, maybe they're all pink in your daughter's room and blue in your son's room. And, you know, keep everything kind of tidy at all times. And if it doesn't fit in one of those storage containers before the movers got there, like you had to figure out another place to put it. I, I always just felt, I always thought like, what is it gonna be like on the other side? Because it, on the front side, you're exhausted, clearly. But on the other side, after you've moved, the kids are cranky, you've been in temp quarters, you know, just bumming and borrowing from everybody, you know, that you meet, you know, the last thing you want to do is try to 
you know, get your life organized. So I was always, always thinking about like on the other side, I just want to take it out, put it away, take it out, put it away. It's clean, it's tidy, minimal laundry, minimal, you know, boxes all over the place. And it just really seemed to work. So that's like a super fun trick. And the other thing, I guess, getting right into, you know, thinking about packing is make sure that you don't have like anything random like one of the crazy things they always did is like they would pack um your like your dresser drawers but they would dump everything out of the drawer into a bundle of paper in a box somewhere with the kitchen stuff <laughs> and then you know you'd, they'd move your drawer and so you'd get back and you'd be like oh my gosh this box is labeled kitchen right but you're scrambling around trying to find all your socks because you had them all together nicely in your top drawer so those space bags, I don't know if you guys have ever seen these things. They're kind of crazy and kind of magical. Um, but you can stuff these bags. Some of them are massive. And you can fill these bags with all kinds of fabric, right? They really work best with fabric. And hook your vacuum up to it and literally suck the air out of this bag. And it will take a bag that is probably full, maybe a foot or a foot and a half full thick of pillows and blankets and things like that. And it will suck them down, no lie, to like three inches. These things were fantastic. One, they keep the dust out. Two, they're plastic. So they're gonna keep everything super clean and they're super compact. So as the movers were filling my boxes of you know linens, like there was so much that fit in that box that when I was able to label that box linens, it like it was all in there. And those are fantastic. So a way to start prepping and using those if you have them or something similar, right, is think of what season you're not gonna need. So if you know you're gonna be moving and it's gonna be summer and you're not gonna need all those winter clothes, winter coats, hats, gloves, and all of that, like preparation of that, like start thinking forward of the season that you're gonna move and anything that's unseasonal for that time unless it's, you know, just kind of get those things pulled aside. Now, if you're going from a summer climate to a winter climate, maybe you can think that way. Like, what are you going to need on the other side? What are you going to need when you get to where you're going? So that's kind of my biggest three tips. More episodes are going to share all kinds of things. Again, I wrote the book on this. Um, so we're going to make sure at the end of every episode down in the comments, you have got a link directly to the book. So if you want to buy one for you, buy one for your friends or anyone you know PCSing that you would love to just make their move and their PCS project super easy and a little bit more enjoyable, you might want to think about getting them uh, this book. It's like $19.99, affordable for everybody. The last topic I want to talk about is the VA loan, because I know a lot of people, and of course, 95% of the buyers that I work with in real estate here in Texas are utilizing their VA loan benefit. And, you know, you've got several different kinds of loans, conventional, FHA, and then you've got the VA. The biggest perk to the VA loan is being able to purchase a home with a zero down payment, where the other loan options, you're like three, three and a half percent, 10 percent, 20 percent, which is really a big chunk of cash. Um, to save for and to just have on hand. You know, military families, we are on a limited, very restrained budget. Usually it's enough to just lift on. Um, we don't really have a lot of extra. And so being able to use that VA loan benefit to buy a house ultimately with zero down is something everyone should strive to do uh, if you're looking for home ownership. Other than that, the market is changing, and I want to just talk real estate for just the last few minutes here because I'm sure no matter where you are during this time of the season, of the year, we're in 2022, you know, we've had this crazy virus. Um, the last couple years really, really have an impact on our inventory, on our real estate market, and our housing just as a whole, like all over the world and the country and the state that you're in, down to the city that you're in. It, it's just been unreal, things that we just haven't ever seen before. But we are seeing a big shift. So here, and as I see on a lot of um, real estate transactions around military posts that are a lot of primarily VA buyers, there's always kind of been this habit of when you say buying a house with zero down, like ultimately buying a house with zero down. 
no money, crosses that table, and you get your keys, which is insane and a really, really amazing benefit that is worth every bit of being in the military and home ownership. However, things are changing. We are seeing our military families, yes, still being able to utilize the VA loan and put zero down, but a lot of the time they're having to come to the table with some type of cash, cash towards their closing costs that aren't covered in a loan, cash to buy a home warranty, um, to negotiate, you know, just basic negotiation in terms in different parts of the contract, we are seeing that the buyers are having to step up with some type of money. Sometimes it's even offering a little bit over the list price of a home just to win the bid, but if the appraisal doesn't cover that with the VA appraisal, you know, now we have a difference of price and who's gonna be responsible for that. Before we got into this crazy real estate market two years ago, the habit and the pattern would just be that as the buyer agent, we would talk to the selling agent, they would talk to the homeowner, we didn't make appraisal by $5,000, and we've kind of be at the mercy, the sellers would be at the mercy of the appraisal and, and ultimately wind up most of the time just lowering the price of the house, of the contract, down to the appraisal value. Well, that is not happening today. So my words of encouragement, if you are making a move this time of year, or I would say now over the next three to five years, because that is what the market is predicting and everything that I'm reading, all of the top people that are doing the studies, we're looking at three to five years before things get back to, I'll say with air quotes, normal. In the meantime, start preparing to put money aside, whether you're moving in a month, you're moving a year from now, you just got to your new duty station and you know you're gonna be there for two years, this is not going to change. Start putting money aside because cash, you've heard cash is king, cash is going to help you win in this real estate market. Having some leverage, having some cash available for realtors, whoever is helping you buy a house, to use as a negotiation term and strengthen term offers on your houses that you're interested in, it's something that you need to really start with now. If you know you're gonna be making a move soon and you don't have that kind of cash, we are seeing people tap into family members that have something that they can lend to you. Watch your bank accounts because we wanna make sure that this activity is something that has been there we don't want to see quick cash kind of chunks of cash coming into your bank account you know oh now i have money uh, for closing because that's going to be tracked and figure out like where did this big lump of money come from so my word of advice closing out this first episode if you are making a move and you are going to be doing it in this crazy real estate market wherever you're going Make sure you're talking to a realtor in that location. If you don't know a realtor where you're moving, I am next worked with probably 10,000 realtors across the country, most of them around other military bases. Tap into me, shoot me a message, let me know where you're going, let me help you get set up with a realtor at the duty station where you are going if you're looking to purchase. So you can start that communication with them and find out what that market is doing and what you need to do to prepare yourself to be ready to get into whatever that market has to offer and win and get a family for a home for your family. So that is my words of advice. Thank you so much for taking this time to listen to me. Again, this was episode one of, I don't even know how many we're gonna have, but I appreciate it if you made it to the end. Thank you so much for following. Again, this is Sandy Payne. This is the PCS Project Podcast. Thank you so much for listening.